Okay, Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Akadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone at Rubal. Shalom to Akim that are teaching this word around the globe in faith and truth and in sincerity. This is the Baba Caleb from the GMS London Forecasters Camp coming back at you for another lesson. Lord willing to hopefully edify the Lord's elect. As always, I'd like to start by saying that we are the real Hebrew Israelites. The real Israelites, these so called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans. West Indians and West Africans predominantly. However, you are going to get Israelites that do look like the other nations because Israel has been scattered amongst all people and all nations throughout our various captivities. But if your seed line by your forefathers goes back to the man in the Bible that was named Jacob, who was then named Israel, you too are an Israelite no matter what you may look like because the book of Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18 states that your nationality is determined by the lineage of your forefathers. Okay, so I've got a little lesson here. Um... I didn't plan this one, but I'm basically doing some work at the moment. Um, what um, One of my interests is music and musical theory and songwriting, stuff like that. And um, I was just reading a book, which is, uh, let me see what it's called. It's called The Complete Book of Scales, Chords, Arpeggios and Cadences by Alfred Publishing. And this book was published on, um, doesn't say the year. Yeah, but it's by Alfred Publishing, yeah? And you've got a page of this book on the screen. This is the first page of the book. Now, the reason why I'm doing this lesson is because um, I've been studying music for a very long time. From back when I was a, a, a child at secondary school, whatever. It's even primary school. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that I'd read a lot of these books written by Edomites on music history and music theory and composition and so on and so forth. And something that I always realised was is that there was a narrative which said, a narrative which um, was that a musical theory, like the theory of, a, let me do it here, you know, you've got chords, triads, uh, that the, the common consensus in these books by these Edomites is that uh, harmony was an invention of the Greeks. You know, they say the Greeks invented harmony and that prior to that music was just, you know, drum beats, just a percussion with no harmony, which is complete bullshit. It's complete bullshit. And I'm going to prove that with the scriptures. Now, let me read what the page on the screen here is the screenshot I took of the page um, where it says this. I'm going to read this. OK, so you can read along with me. It says the importance of scales. Right, what's the scale? Scale is like... That's a scale, right? And an arpeggio is basically playing the um, the, the primary notes of the triad of that scale. So let me do it slightly. This isn't a music lesson. This is supposed to be a lesson on the scriptures. But to edify the point, let me just do this, right? So if you play a scale sequentially, like... Right, that's a C major scale, but if you take the uh, first, third, and fifth, which is the, which makes the triad of C major, if you just play those notes, that's considered an arpeggio, okay? So let's read this, it says, The importance of scales and arpeggios, particularly with regard to the pianist's ability to perform, cannot be <clears throat> overestimated. To trace the development of major and minor scales throughout the history of music would require many pages. But we do know, listen to this, but we do know that these scales had their origins in the system of modes that was developed in ancient Greek music and music of the church. Now, this is complete bullshit, right? Because we know that the Greek Empire was the first time that the, first time that the Edomites came into power. Yeah, they had the Greek Empire, then they had the Roman Empire. Um, now, why would they push this narrative that, oh, music was an invention of the Greeks? Because they're trying to push that Edomite superiority out, superiority out there. Now, I'm going to disprove that with the scriptures, but let's keep going. It says, in ancient Greece, certain musical tribes used a lyre, a force... <laughs> yeah, Esau is a lyre. A four-stringed harp. Oh, man. Oh, man. Did not King David play a harp? That just cuts this bullshit right there. But let's keep going. It says, certain... In ancient Greece, 
Greece, certain musical tribes used a lyre, a four-stringed harp called the tetrachordon, tetra meaning four. The four tones encompassed by this instrument constituted, constituted a perfect fourth. Now, perfect fourth would be, um, this is in your major scale, you've got the root, that's the first, the second, the third, and the fourth is perfect. So, C to F is a fourth. That makes a perfect fourth, okay? Um, and we'll call it a tetrachord. This was the building block that became the basis for our modern scales. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> Right, so that's what they're saying. Let's disprove this with the scriptures, yeah? We're going to go to, um, get my scriptures up. We'll go to uh, Daniel, the third chapter, yeah? This was in the Babylonian Empire, which the Babylon Babylonian Empire preceded the Greek Empire, okay? It was what? Babylonian, Babylonian, Medio Persian, then the Greeks, then the Romans, I believe. So let's go back to the Babylonian Empire and Daniel, the third chapter, okay? Let's start with Daniel 1, yeah? So it says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, Jeho king of Judah, yeah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it, yeah? So King Nebuchadnezzar preceded the Greek Empire. Yeah? Daniel 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof was six cubits. Lucky. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, so it's like it. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather the, together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, and the counsellors, and the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counsellors, and the sheriffs, and the rulers, and all the rulers of the province, provinces, were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And he stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound, listen to this, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, oh, oh, cut. <laughs> Did they not just try and say that um, the Greeks invented the lyre, which is a four-string harp? But yet, King Nebuchadnezzar had what? He had, at what time he heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, cut, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Now, here's another point. If you're having all these instruments playing simultaneously, what have you got? Harmony. Because harmony, like... <laughs> Rhythm is just like sequential. See, that's one note after another. But if I was to do. That's harmony because I'm playing one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. When you play uh, multiple notes at the same time, that create that is what create, creates harmony because harmony is two at the same time. One, two or more at the same time. Because you can have one sequential or that's harmony. Two, two notes sounding at the same time. Now, if they're on different instruments, they still have to be in harmony. Otherwise, you get discord and it will sound chaotic. So the, the presence of harmony had to have been present in the Babylonian Empire which preceded the Greek Empire, which totally blows this bullshit out of the water where they're trying to say that the Greeks invented, invented harmony. So let's keep going. It says, And whosoever not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at the time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, 
the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people in the nations and their languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. And they spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast down into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Ooh, so we're in the Babylonian Empire at this time. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. The Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded they bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you not serve my, my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at the time, whatsoever ye hear, the sound of the cornet. Now, this is the thing. Nothing is recorded in the scriptures to be superfluous. You know, a lot of people might read this verse, this chapter and be thinking, OK, we've been told what instruments we're playing already. Why does the most I feel the need to keep emphasising all these multiple instruments that were playing at the time when Nebuchadnezzar wanted the, the people them to um, bow down and worship the golden image of himself, which he had set up. Well, it's being repeated again and again because of these times. We're living in these times where the education system has been trying to push that, oh yeah, the Greeks came up with um, uh, uh, music theory of harmony and, and um, intervals and triads and all this kind of modes and all this kind of shit. And then they turn around and say, yeah, Pythagoras can, invented Pythagoras theorem, like trigonometry and stuff, which is bullshit because Pythagoras went down to Egypt to study and learn that shit. But yet he comes out, now they're trying to attribute it to, as if he was the inventor. But this is Esau's vain and futile attempts to try and paint himself as, as the great inventor, where she is nothing nothing of the sort. You know, he tries to put himself as this great um man who 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 enlightened the world. That's fucking bullshit. And I'm gonna get that in a minute when I go to Maccabees, but let's finish this. It says Now if ye be ready at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made, well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that power that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our power whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. These men were bound in their coats and their hosen and with their hats and with their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and he rose and in haste he rose up in haste and spake, and said unto his counsellors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the son of the most high. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego ye servants of the most high power come forth and come hither 
then Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors, the captains and the king's counsellors being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the power of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own power. Therefore I make a decree. It says, Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speaketh anything amiss against the power of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other power that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Ooh, so let's go from that to Maccabees 1. Because that's when the Greeks came into power. First Maccabees. And it says, And it happened after that Alexander, being Alexander the so-called great, when he wasn't great, nothing but it, anything but great, but it says Alexander the freak. And it, and it happened after Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, the king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned in his stead first over Greece. Yep. And he made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth and went through the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up and he gathered together a mighty and strong host and ruled over the countries, nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexander reigned twelve years and then died, and his servants bear rule every one of every one in his place. And after his death they all put crowns upon themselves, so did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. So that was the beginning of the Greek Empire, and evils were multiplied in the earth when they came into power. So yeah, man, Lord willing, that's been an edifying little... Um, um, breakdown of, of that bullshit that they teach in the education system that the Greeks invented uh, harmony and music and everything like that because it's not true you know it says King David played the harp and that's back in the book of is it Judges I believe or the or book of Samuel maybe no it's not Judges it's the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel um, yeah King David played the harp and a harp is a harmonic instrument so they're trying to say that the Greeks came up with the um the tetrachord, which is a four-string lyre, it's a harp-type instrument, it's complete bullshit. Complete and utter bullshit. So, with that, giving all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rukakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone that rule well, and Shalom to Yaki and teaching this word in faith and truth. And until the next lesson, I do, Lord, to win, and I say Shalom, wa'a ba ba ba, wa'a kram Shalom for now.